I'm Max Sterling, welcome to LARPgasm. A viewer recently said to me, hey, do you have any plans to make pants to go with that cheap easy tunic that you made? Well, that's what this video is all about. Now, I know a lot of us out there are in the skirt wearing community and our skirt wearers, you know, you got it made. If you wear a skirt to LARP, you can literally just walk into a store, pick something that essentially looks medieval or renaissance period and just buy it and you're made. Now, for the people that want to wear pants though, well, that's what this video is for. Because there are a lot of people in the pants wearing community and they want to see pants to go with their tunics. So, for those folks, I actually went out and uh, bought a pair of pants. Now, these are like a sweat pant, sort of like a pajama pant material. So, they're not real thick like regular sweat pants. And uh, this is going to be our base. Now, I would have loved to have found brown or like an earth tone uh, that's not black, but black was pretty much my only option aside from, you know, bright red or ones with stars down the legs. So we went ahead and got these instead, and this is where we're going to start from. Now, these are quite large compared to what I would normally wear, so that's the first step when you purchase this buy up at least one size, maybe even two sizes, because you're going to want them to be baggy. And aside from that, let's go ahead and get started. When picking these out, you want to try to pick ones that don't have a lot going on. Now this unfortunately does have one pocket on the back, but is actually a attached pocket. It's not internal. So this can easily be ripped off with a seam ripper or a razor blade. And now it does have two pocket pockets but they're pretty well concealed. Uh, they're not cheesy white lining, they're actually black, so really they're gonna be almost not noticeable. So you may wanna leave those on there uh, if you wanna carry stuff, or you could run a stitch on there so easy and just seal those up and not have to worry about it. Now they have a drawstring on them, so you can tighten them up. And these are actually a size 3XL US. Now I don't know what that equates to in Europe or Japan, but these are freaking massive. I mean, here's me. Now I'm a big dude. So imagine how big these pants are. So they're really big and also they are freaking long. Sorry, my hand hit the ceiling. But this is what you want. Uh, the thing is, if you're a bigger dude like me, then projects get progressively more difficult to do because you just can't find the stuff up to three sizes from where you are. I was lucky to find these at a bargain shop. Uh, if you're a small person, world's your oyster, you already knew that. So get yourself a pair of pants that's up and long and you're good to go. So we got the pants on and we're ready to go LARPing, right? I mean, this is all we need, right? Pants. No. Can you wear these just how they are? Yes. I mean, they're $5.99 at the store. You can wear these to LARP. You're good to go. Maybe you pull the drawstring out, let it dangle to be a little bit more legitimate looking. I mean, and this is 100% better than blue jeans, okay? But we can do a lot better, and we're going to. So, if you're going to wear something like this, that's fine, but you got to at least get a solid color. If you can find brown, fantastic. Black is okay, maybe even a dark gray, if you can find a dark gray, but you gotta try. I've seen people that just wear like literal pajama pants off the shelf at the store. Like, I don't know that they were like Avengers Infinity War pants, but they were like flannel and plaid, and like, they were just really bad. Uh, don't be that person, okay? Don't be that person. Now, if you watch my tunic video, then you know all about pockets. And we're gonna start by removing this one because it doesn't really look the part. And you can just get in here with a seam ripper or a razor blade or whatever and start pulling these stitches out so you can free that up. So let's go ahead and get started. And through the miracle of time, the rear pocket is gone. Now, if you made any happy little mistakes when you were cutting into this, just get some thread and hand stitch it. I made one happy mistake. I used a fancy stitch that has a name to fix it, but if you don't, that's fine. Just stitch it however you can. Just make sure if you're using black, get black thread, brown, brown thread, so on and so forth. But even that may not be that important. Um, just don't be afraid to try. Pro tip, 
don't throw away that pocket you cut off. You may want to use it as a patch to sew onto your pants whenever they're all done. If you're not going for that ragamuffin sort of peasant look, then you can throw this in a pile and save it for later or just discard it. Step two, let's take a look and see what these look like inside out. We're gonna take a page out of our post-apocalyptic distressing handbook here. Sometimes clothes look better when they're inside out. So let's have a look and see what these look like. So we have a lot of hmm, interesting stitch lines on them. We have some tags that we'll have to remove. Pockets, of course, can just be pulled right back through, just like magic. If that doesn't work, then this may not work for you, or you may want to sew these back up. I think for my particular pants, they were actually looking better right side out. But when you get yours, be sure to give them a turn inside out and just see if that looks more aesthetically pleasing. I can tell you this much, if you're making these and you're going to use them in something other than a medieval setting for some reason, inside out may very well be the way to go. But either way, you may still want to cut these tags out now we come to a crossroads. Now the question is, are you going to tuck your top in or are you going to leave your top out? If you're going to leave your top out like I do, then I would say leave this band. That's not a problem. But there's a reason why we bought these larger. If you're going to tuck your top in, this elastic band, I'm sorry, but that's not period, that's gotta go. What you're gonna wanna do is taken. I would suggest pick where they have two seams and I would cut right in the middle of that so you still have one line of stitches running the whole way around it because if you cut under that this whole thing may come undone so my suggestion would be to if you look on here you may have to jack up the 1080p if you can't see it but right in between these two lines is where I'd cut so you're still gonna have a little bit of elastic but really it's more or less just to hold this together. Now depending on what type of fabric it is and so on and so forth, uh, you know, you may be able to cut under that. Ideally you would, but if you want this to not completely fall apart on you and you don't want to have to do a lot of extra sewing and things like that, I would cut in there. For me, I wear mine over top, so you will never see that anyhow. But um, I'll get back to that in a minute whenever we uh, work on the finishing touches. So now we're gonna talk about the length of these pants. And let me go ahead and change back into them real quick. So when we're talking about pants, there's a couple of ways to address these legs. Now, like I said, these are way too long for me, but that was by purpose. Now, if you buy really large size pants, like a 3X, 4X, 5X, they're probably gonna be long anyways, just because that's sort of the default way that they produce them. But we're going to fall back on some inspiration from my pal MC Hammer, and if you were around in the 90s, then you may be familiar with pegging your legs. And we're not talking about pirates here, so what you're gonna do, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, is you take your pant leg, pull it tight, and you fold it over on itself like that. And from there, you're going to roll it up. just like that. Then from there, you can let it down. Now you may have to make whatever adjustments you need to to get the length right, but essentially, you're just going to peg these things. Now, if you want to, you can you know, put a pin in there, you can sew it so it's permanently like that, or you can just choose to do this every time you wear them. Now, back in the day, we didn't let the excess fall down over, but for this exercise, we're going to. And as you can see, now they're hemmed, basically. And if they're pegged well, they won't fall down. If you put them inside of boots or something like that, then you'll be good to go. And that peg, you can actually pull up higher or lower, depending on what you're trying to do. So if you want it up real high, 
you can do that and turn these into shorter pants. But the important thing is, is that they're still real baggy. And so that's one way to do this. Now the other way, of course, is if you watched my video on how to do Viking leg wraps, you can certainly go from this point and put your Viking leg wrap on there and then have your pants have the leg wraps, which I think would look very good uh, if you're playing a Viking or that sort of genre. But if you're not, then these are a couple of different solutions for you. Of course, you could always just take the pant and shove it into a boot as well if you're wearing high boots. You may not even have to do any sort of pegging at all. And of course, as a final solution, you could also just hem them or cut them. I would suggest leaving them long though and pegging them or using the leg wraps. Uh, if you watch my video on those $2 leg wraps, you got no excuse. You can make leg wraps for two bucks and use them with this and they will look great. So a moment ago I talked about, are you gonna tuck your tunic in or leave it out? Well, if you have a belt like this, you're in luck. And by belt like this, I mean one that snaps open so you can actually remove the buckle. And if you don't have one, you should invest in one because you can wear this every day, but then also use it for LARP as well. And then what you're gonna do is get yourself to the hardware store and buy some of these. I mean, you could probably also buy them at the fetish store, but the hardware store sells them and they're buck 90 for two US. So you can use one and you can uh, share the other one with your buddy in the cabin after game's called. So we're going to open this up and get this ring out. And then the easiest way to do this is just put the ring right where your buckle used to go. And look at that. Wow. A medieval belt. Aren't these like $70? Dude, no. Nope. And then of course tying these isn't really that big of a deal. Of course you want to make sure you have a really long one. This one's not that long so make sure you get yourself one of sufficient length and then from there you're just gonna tie it off and boom. So medieval belt. <laughs> How much easier does that get? Now another direction you can go with this project is rope. Um, when I wear this, I'm usually like a peasant type person. So I actually wanted to keep this like real sort of broke. Um, so what I did was I went out and bought some rope. Hardware store. And then what we're gonna do is just cut ourselves off a piece that'll wrap around us. When you're measuring this, make sure you leave yourself a lot of length because you're gonna wanna have it uh, be longer than you need it to be. And then just tie it off, boom. If you wanted to, you could also incorporate this ring in some manner. Maybe take this and uh, loop it through like some sort of magic trick. And then try to make some sort of legitimate belt out of it. Uh, it's entirely up to you. <clears throat> Depends on if you're playing fantasy or if you want to try to keep it more period accurate. Uh, entirely up to you but like I said most of the games I play are not reenactments so stuff like this is good boom and you're done so let's take a look and see what this entire outfit looks like and here's the completed look have the tunic the rope belt and of course the pants that we just made paid the legs and I added some fly fishing shoes uh, which very much looked the part and uh, that's pretty much it. So now you have no excuse to not have a good looking NPC costume or a PC costume if you're struggling with finding the stuff you need. You know, the pants are very inexpensive and the tunic of course is as well. If you like this video, please click like, please subscribe to my channel and be sure to let everyone that you know know about my channel. And uh, hopefully this helps you out with your LARP game or 
you're doing a play or Halloween or something, I hope that you find this useful and uh, just please consider supporting my channel. And of course, as always, adventure on.